Wake up, girl. Where am... Ow, my head. You have some nerves leaving in front of my shop. Leave before our customers see you. I was in my room. How am I here? Did you not hear what I said, you filthy child? Filthy? You do not speak to your crown princess in such manner. If you're the crown princess, then I'm the queen. You must have been knocked on your head some quite so hard to have such a grand delusions. I'm not delusional. I am Lucette Riella Brighton, blood daughter of King Gennaro Brighton III, and the crown princess of Angiel. Right, the king never had the daughter with that witch. Is she referring to mother? Witch? Do not pretend to be stupid, girl. I can only stare at her puzzled. Our good king only has stepchildren. Princess Imag- And you are most definitely neither of them. What? Now get gone before you start shouting your crazy gibberish at my customers and scare them away. With the huff, she leaves me to my own rapidly turning thoughts. I quickly realize that I'm wearing tighter clothes and that I do not even have shoes on. No, 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 this can't be happening. Something shines against my cheek and I reach up and grab it. Ooh, the glass slipper. This is... It all floods back to me. To Laura being a witch, Cinderella's glass slipper. This is not a dream. To Laura gave me the fairy tale curse. My hands begin to tremble. I must remain... I must return to the palace and try to talk to the king. Let me in! Sorry, girl, this place is off limits. Lit to uninvited guests. You do not understand. I am Crown Princess Lucette Riella Brighton. I must speak with my father. As I loathe as I am to call him that, I have to. No one will believe me if I am dressing by the title. You best leave now, nice and quiet, before we have to force you. If you would only- Make way for the king! The gates swing open and three horses trot out. Soldiers, ride up two horses while the last horse has a different, familiar rider. Father! I immediately move to block the path of the horses. Soldiers move back to hold me back. Your Majesty! What is this? Your Majesty, this girl is claimed to be your daughter. Daughter? Both of my stepchildren are in the palace right now. What? Even father is part of this? Father, you must help me! A witch has cursed me! For once in your life, just once, help me. You must believe me! Tell me, where is your family, child? Why are you all alone? He looks at me with pity in his eyes. He's looking more kindly as a peasant than he ever did when I was crowned princess and his daughter. I recoil. You must be hungry. Take this. Oh, shit. So he doesn't even- Oh, so the curse is just like erases- She's like completely erased from reality in, in, in a sense. This should feed you and your family for a day or two. The kingdom offers work opportunities to those who need them. Please let your parents know. I do not want your pity, father. Please escort this girl back to her home. Make sure she gets there safely. At once, your majesty. I watch as my father and his two guards ride away to them on their horses, leaving me to stand in the dust. Again, he's left me alone. Again. Where is your home, girl? There's nowhere left for me to go. Father has forgotten me. Leave me. Now look here. Our orders were to leave me alone suit yourself can't say we didn't try don't cause any more scenes little girl i watch with bleary eyes as the soldiers return to the palace how can this be happening I stare at a small pouch in my hand i do not know what hurts more the fact that i have just been unceremoniously paraded a away from my home like I am nothing more than a piece of garbage, or the fact that my own father does not recognize me. Oh look, that girl's hideous dress! How difficult it must be to be poor! I clutch the pouch closer to my chest as I run to the empty alley, and I huddle in a corner, trying to become as small as possible. I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping that when the next, when I next open them, everything will go back to normal. Recall memories, wake up. Ooh, a dream? Wake up? Maybe? Chapter 1 The Monarch How long is this demo? Holy shit, man. When I open my eyes, I am only on I'm still in the streets. I must have fallen asleep. But the nightmares continue. I am cold in my rags and I hold myself for warmth, willing to willing some of the cold away but fail. My feet are numb in pain, caked in dirt, and I have gathered from walking barefoot around the town. Well, there's a frightful sight. 
Beggar probably thought she could try her luck with the nobility that lived around here. Ah, just look how rugged she looks. What are you looking at? At two women who lack the basic manner of noble upbringing? Silence, girl! You don't, Do you know what you're talking about? No, and I don't care. What nerve. Let's go. There's no reason to stoop to a commoner's level. I'll remember you, and once I break this curse, I'll make you regret your words. Oh, shit! Yes! Fuck those people. <laughs> I've become accurately aware that the fact that I haven't eaten anything for more than a day. Oh, no, that's not good. I've been sitting here thinking of way new mess- Thinking on the new mess that is my life. But moving around won't break the curse. Crying won't help either. I should find the witch first. But how? I have no idea where she is. Dolora. I swear I'll make you regret for doing this to me. When I find you, I'll... I'll find food first. I like the music too. It 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 very like it it fits everything that is going on. Cause sometimes some games have music that don't like match like what is happening in the story. So I I enjoyed the soundtrack as well. <clears throat> is this all the king thinks I'm worth? Leave, girl. A dirty peasant like you has no place in this restaurant. But why? I can pay. Find another place. You're scaring away my customers. Am I not a customer? Shoo! There's nothing for you here. He's just swatting me away like a fly. The nerve! Sensing that this will get me nowhere, I ball my hands into fists and walk away. I get the same treatment in the next three restaurants I try. I am treated as something less than dirt, like money has no real value. I'm a crown princess. They have no right to turn me away like this. I have been eating stale bread, anything to keep the hunger at bay. The bread barely helps. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a small bakery. There are croissants displayed and am I making my mouth water. Slowly, I began to make my way over there. Ow! My feet ache with every step. They look and feel even worse than before. If only I had enough coins to, for a pair of shoes. If the rags that I am wearing and the pouch of money are all that I have, then I have. I need to prioritize. And I will die before I, I beg. Two croissants. You'll need to pay, girl. There's no free handouts here. I take a coin from my pouch and hand it to her. This should be more than enough. The shop owner stares at the coin before reluctantly taking it. She hands me two croissants in a paper bag. I will not ask where you got these coins. Are you implying that I stole them? How else would a beggar like you get that amount of coin? Now be off with you, child. I won't have you scaring away any other customers. Yo, everyone's so rude in this town. What the heck? Without another word, I turn and start to walk away from the woman. So this is the goodness of the people of NGL? I take a bite of the croissant, cringing a little at the dryness. Hey, girl! What now? I saw you in that shop. Wanna share- Wanna share how you got those coins there? Excuse me? Oh god, look at her, brushing us off like she's royalty or something. Let me go! You ain't no, ain't no better than us. Now, be a good girl and hand over that pouch. The man on the left grabs my pouch and attempts to yank it from me. He will not let these brutes take anything from me. I elbow the man in the stomach and then aim to kick the other man's shin. I have an opening and take it. What? I pull my I pull myself free and began to run as fast as I can. Oh, she knows how to fight too. Cause I hate when they make princess type characters like they're so weak and they need like a man to help them or whatever. It's I appreciate that the fact that Lucette can fight too. So that's good. That's good. Hey, where did I go? I'm not familiar with any of the streets at all. It's highly likely I'm just going to hit a dead end. Oh shit! Oh, let's go left. Did I make the right choice? I can't let the pain of my feet or my exhaustion stop me. If I stop now, they'll definitely catch me. And taking my coins might not be the worst thing they do. A dead end? Nowhere left to run now, girl. What do I do? Oh, who are you, gentlemen? This is definitely not how you treat a lady. Huh? Who's there? A shadow looms above us. Before I can blink, a person has jumped in front of me. His body acts as a barrier between the two men and me. Ah! This is the dude that I saw in the intro! <laughs> Who are you? Oh, me? Just passing gentleman concerning about a damsel in distress. He turns to the man, his expression calm, his eyes flashing dangerously. Now, shall I teach you gentlemen a lesson? But he, he's got a sword. What? Come back here, you coward. The two of us can take him. I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. This is way too much trouble for a little gold. Are you alright, my lady? Woo! Oh, God, yes! <laughs> I'm so done! <laughs> I'm picking this dude in red hair first. I don't care, man. That's who I'm picking first. You found her! The boyfriend yesterday? 
<laughs> a little slower on you, kid. Don't call me that. These two know each other? I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding and my feet simultaneously like they're frozen and, and on fire. My stomach rumbles, the hunger coming back with vengeance. My body feels light. Princess! Princess? Lady Parfait will be able to help her. <laughs> Parfait? <laughs> what? Will be able to help her. You're right. We need to move before anyone else sees us. Yeah. Hang in there, princess. Everything is fading. Recall memories. Let's recall memories this time. What is that in front? What is that in your hands, Lucette? I. It was hurt. I just wanted to help, but it died. It's so. It's all my fault. It's not your fault, my love. It died because it was weak. But. This is the world, Lucette. Only the strong survive. The weak get casted aside to die. You are not weak. You are strong, my crown princess, and you do not cry. Now wipe your tears. I do not want to see you cry again. Do you understand? Y yes Now get rid of that thing and wash your hands. Do you not hear me, child? Y yes mother! So her mother was like really tough, but not at the same time? Is that what I'm getting at? Because Lizette speaks highly of her mother very much. So I'm I'm kind of like iffy about the relationship. Oh, you're awake! Where am I? Uh, well, um, this is in my room. My hands fly to my chest, where the little gust slipper hangs from my neck. Still here. Are you okay, miss? This girl is the maid that tore Dolores' dress. The one I fired from her clumsiness. Miss? To think that I would meet her again here, like this. Um... Leave me alone. Right, of course. Here's some salad that I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Eesh. Now what? Haven't you thought at all, Ice Princess? You! Suddenly there she is, Dolores standing before me with a side smile looking happy as with herself. She's the cause of everything I have been through. All the pain, heartache, and hunger. It is her fault. I try to stand, think thinking to give the witch a piece of my mind, but as soon as my feet touch the floor, pain shoots up my leg. I end up falling back to bed. Ow! You should be more grateful to the girl you just scared away. She's been taking care of you for the past two days. Two days? I've been passed out for two days? I'm suddenly vibrating with anger. Remove the curse. Now. <laughs> Do you think you could just command me to remove the curse in your best princess voice? What do you want, gold? What I want is worth more than all the gold you can summon in NGL, princess. Besides, haven't you read your fairy tales? The caster cannot take the curse back. You need to focus on breaking the curse yourself if you want your life back. Mother burned the books before I could read more than one or two of them. Do not think either involve curses. Just genies trading away your voices for legs. What? Oh, the Little Mermaid. I was like, wait a second, what the hell? It's good that you're awake, princess. Perfect, should you really be up and about? Don't fuss, I'm feeling much better. Are you a witch as well? Oh no, my name is Perfect, I'm a fairy. Oh. Oh, whoa, what? A witch and a fairy in one room being friendly with one another? Impossible. Oh, look at her face. You weren't expecting that at all, were you, princess? What's going on? I'm sure you have many questions, princess. How do you know I'm the princess? Don't be silly, of course she knows. I promise we'll do our best to answer your questions. I don't even know where to start. Where would you, what would you like to know? Um, why was I cursed? How do I break the curse? What happened? You know, first of all, I'd like to know why they picked her. Seriously? You're seriously gonna ask that? I wouldn't have asked if I knew the answer. You have such a temper on you. Very well. This one's got a simple answer. It's because you're cold-hearted, cruel, wicked princess who deserves to be punished. Oh shit, Delora! A curse is the only way to force you to change your horrid ways. Delora, you could have put that more nicely. I'm pretty sure I was already being nice. Change? Why do I need to change? Are you completely unaware of how heartless you are to other people? The coldness that you show- The coldness that you show your step-family, your father? 
the way that you treat Princess Emma and JL. Why would they need to be treated any differently? You need to prove that you have some goodness in you, Princess. Some smidgen of kindness. Why? People only show kindness when they want something from you. The instant they get what you want, they'll just throw you away. Ha! How do I break the curse, dude? The necklace you've got is one of Cinderella's glass slippers. To break the curse, you must get the second slipper, complete the pair. And how do I do that? By doing three good deeds. What? It's a very easy thing to do. At least for someone who knows how to be good. Three good deeds? What do you mean? I won't even know where to start. Take heart, princess. Goodness is in Inet and everyone. Are you sure that's the case with this one? Delora, you're not helping. I'm a witch and I think I have more goodness in my big toe than she has in her entire body. Now you're just being mean. I- you know, I'm not gonna- I'm gonna be real here right now. I kinda like Delora. <laughs> so... For every good deed you accomplish, you will get a piece of the glass zipper. When you've gotten all three, you complete the pair and the curse will break. Simple. I suggest you start polishing the attitude of yours. What happens if I don't break the curse? I think you know the answer to that one already, princess. Um, why are you working together? You know, that's a, that's a nice one to answer. To answer that, we'll have to give you in a bit of- we have to give you a bit of history lesson. Oh, I've got this. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. Dramatics aside, there were one crystal in the kingdom called the Crystal- Crystal Lem Lucius. It is power- it is powered by happiness and love. The other crystal is that one that I can't pronounce, powered by fear and anger. Strongest of the witches, bearer, the crystal bearer. The strongest of the fairies is the Lucy's bearer. Parfait is the Lucy's bearer. Oh, that's what I thought! And then Delore is the bearer of the other one, right? I take in Parfait's frail and sickly appearance. She's the strongest fairy? The Great War greatly damaged me. My powers are a fraction of what they used to be. And with no child, I have no successor to, to, to my burden. What, is, what does a bear do? A bear is regulate the energy of the crystal to keep the balance between darkness and light. For centuries, the fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. Until a certain human decided to be a pest. Who was he? I knew him as Hans Gabriel Grimm. He wrote fairy tales. And he started a feud between the witches and the fairies in the process. How could a single person have so much power? <laughs> It was the power of his words. In grim stories, the witches were always evil. The humans naturally grew feared and hate them. They began to hunt them. Didn't witches fight back? We aren't allowed to use our powers to cause harm. But all changed when the when the bearer decided- Oh, sh wait, so the lore is not the bearer then. Oh, that's right, because she died. What the hell am I talking about? But that all changed when the bearer decided to have revenge on more important than our promise. The witches took over the kingdom. They created the fairy tale curse to spread even more sadness and anger to fill the human heart with negative emotion. All to fuel the power of the Tenebarium. I think I said that right. <laughs> the delicate balance of harmony between the crystals was broken. The witches and the Tenebarium grew far stronger than they were ever meant to be. We had no choice but to fight, and the Great War happened. The Tenebarium bearer was eventually defeated. The Great War was ended with the help of the unexpected ally, but many lives were lost. The good witches suffered horribly. And we still stay hidden in hopes of having any kind of peace. Are you trying to make me believe that you were good witches? The Tenebarian can be poisoned in heart and mind taken to darkness and cruelty. The witches put themselves at risk in working with the Tenebarium, in, in maintaining harmony. Some inevitably are corrupted. Many good witches were corrupted during the war. Most remained that way. Many do not believe it, but the witches can just be kind as fairies. And yet, it wasn't a fairy that cursed me. <laughs> I've done by good cursing you, princess. You'll thank me when you've broken it. Delora was not corrupted by the Tenebrarium. She's as good as they come. Hopefully, you'll see that for yourself. I doubt it. I prefer from my own inherited goodness. Parfait and I are working together because we have a common goal, which is to restore balance between darkness and light. Three good deeds and I get my life back. That doesn't seem that bad for a curse because Lucid is like, okay, I'm being really honest right now, she's kind of overreacting. The curse that Delora gave her is not that bad, if in my opinion. It could have been a lot worse, you know what I mean? Easier said than done. 
You said Cinderella, didn't you? Didn't she go to the ball and find a prince? Does doing good have to do with that? Going to a ball, finding a prince. It's also old-fashioned. No fun in that. Cinderella is a girl with a pure heart. She's always willing to help others, even when they're cool to her. Anyway, I brought some clothes for you. I'll leave them on the table. We'll be waiting outside. There are some people I'd like you to meet. I cannot believe this. I look down at my neatly bandaged feet. I have to admit that while they're sore, there's nowhere, they were nowhere, they were nowhere near, near as painful as they were two days before. Here's some salad that I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Why would she even care? I was the reason she lost her job at the palace. Oh, she probably doesn't remember me as a princess. But still, she has no reason to do such things for me. I ignore the cell for the time being and gingerly stand up, testing my feet for the pain. The injury is definitely healing. I slowly walk over to the table and change into the clothes that have been left for me there. The dress is nowhere near as luxurious as the one that I wore at the palace, but still, it's far improved from the rags. It's still cute! Look at that! I think it's adorable still! All my life, I never had to lift a finger. And now... I will not let them see how much they have riled me. I will freeze to break. Just watch me. I will free myself in this curse. What is this place? There are several people in the room chatting and I noticed the girl that had left me the cell by the counter, serving drinks. But as soon as the people in the room notice me, the room falls to immediate silence. Well, look what we have here. The Ice Princess herself. Huh? They knew who I am? I didn't think it was true. Curse for her cold-heartedness. As to be expected. You remember who I am and yet you still treat me like this? Well, you aren't really a princess anymore, are you? You're one of us now, girl. Oh, wait, what? Are these all, like, the cursed people? Like, the fairy tale? Those, those who have been affected by the fairy tale curse. I think that's what that's happening right here. Interesting! So people who have been cursed remember, like, the life before they were cursed? If that makes sense? It's very interesting. Everyone, please, you shouldn't be treating a newcomer like this. Princess, let me apologize. They mean no offense. Can't believe that. Not one people perfect is preferring it to simply smirk and shrug as I meet their gazes. What is this place? Perfect smiles as she clasps her hands together. Welcome to the Mar Martian Tavern. Martian? Welcome to the Martian Tavern. A home for those with the fairy tale curse. I knew it! See, I told you. It should have been obvious already, though. <laughs> you make it sound like it's some kind of holiday house. Don't ruin the moment, Delora. Martian? Tavern? The Martian Tavern was built three years ago, when the number of cursed NGL continued to rise. The goal was to gather those affected so that may so they might help each other to break the curse. Of course, I am here to provide help as necessary. Only the cursed and those aligned with us, our cause can stay here. The evil and the wicked can never find this place. Most of the people here are cursed? How come these people remember who I am? The cursed are not affected by the conditions of someone else's curse. Your condition is simple. Everyone has forgotten you are the crown princess. But because these people are here are cursed, they still remember your title. Huh. Interesting. It goes without saying that fairies and witches are also not affected. Come, princess. Let me introduce you to the, to the few boarders we have on Martian. Perfect beckons the serving girl over. This is Anise. She helps in the merchant. She does most of the cooking. I'm sure you understand why she's working here now. I believe she deserves an apology. Miss Delora? What are you talking about? Don't worry your sweet little head over it. You don't remember what this ice princess did to you. Huh? I have done nothing to apologize for. Clumsiness does not befit a palace maid. I only did what was necessary. Well, it's nice to meet you, princess. I'm Anise Willowy. I think. <laughs> I hope we get along. Awkward. <laughs> um, really? This is how you're going to start doing good? I didn't believe I asked for your opinion. Please, you two, no fighting. I hold my tongue as my friend leads me to two people whose faces are incredibly familiar. Whoa! Whoa! Why is everybody so beautiful in this game? <laughs> there are faces I have seen in the palace before. This is... 
Jurian Vill- Valentin and Garland Belrot. God damn these names. <laughs> How did you know? Both of you were in the Order of Keldra. That's right. They were two of Sir Alcaster's best knights. It was a big surprise when they both left a year ago. I only found out recently that it was because they acted against Sir Alcaster's orders. They were stripped of their titles and dishonorably charged from service. What are you two doing here? We help we help the fairies. They and Anise are upset, upset uh, exceptions. Uh, bleh, 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 I'm having strokes. And are allowed in this tavern without the curse. Jurian and Garland lead a, lend us the strength to help protect this place protect the Martian. Protect From the witches. They do anything to make sure their curses remain unbroken. And what about you? I am an exception. Also, I'm good. You keep forgetting the good part. Remember, not all witches are evil. Your curse is a test. A test? Originally, the wicked were cursed so that they could learn to change. Their curses were meant to teach them a lesson. I hope your curse will teach you a lesson too, Ice Princess. I'm not only trying to help you. I don't need you to show me how to change. I just want my life back. Well, to do that, you have to break your curse. Try and make some friends, princess. They might be able to help break your curse. Oh, and I'd love to hang around and watch the princess try to be friendly. We have to- we have work to do, Delora. Fine. Try not to make any more enemies, princess. I really like Delora. Can I just say that right now? She's so awesome. The instant my friend Delora left the room, the temperature dropped several degrees. Now that I'm alone, I feel the cold stares return. Disgust. Contempt. As if I'm the reason that they are cursed and here is a refugee in the Martian in the first place. Make friends. All I ever, all I ever had were my dolls. I never needed friends. I don't break this curse on my own. I was told it was rude to stare. One man suddenly stands up, in the anger apparent on his face. His hands clench and unclench into fists as he glares at me pointedly. Julian and Garland place themselves in front of me, shielding me from the man. You know the rules. What happened here in the past stays in the past. And no one is allowed to harm anyone else in Martian. If you cannot comply, you are no longer welcome here. Tch. No matter. The ice prince was looking at was coming to her. He throws one last glare at my way before sitting down again. Break the rules... Break the rules and you'll get what's coming to you. That goes for everyone here. Jurian's tone is cold and firm. There's no doubt that she means what she says. So these are the great knights of the Order of Caldera. The Martians begin to settle down and everyone eventually goes back to their conversation and meals. I walk towards an empty table, realizing that I'm being deliberately ignored. I become immersed in my thoughts as I sit down. One thought, however, comes to me immediately. They hate me somehow. When I've only ever left the palace twice in my life. How did this happen? The only people in the two treated me with any respect were Anise, Jurian, and Garland. Is it because they can't remember who I am? Maybe be maybe being in the Martian is not such a good idea. I doubt anyone here wants to help me break my curse. They'd probably rather see me suffer under under its weight. Three good deeds? How am I supposed to complete three when I don't even know if I can even accomplish one? Okay! I looked into- I'm sorry, I- I- cause like, earlier I freaked the fuck out when I saw Karma, which is the- the dude with the red hair. I- I look- I went onto their Kickstarter page once again cause I wanted to read up cause I wasn't sure. In- in the part one, we saw a beautiful lady, which is this character, and then I'm like thinking to myself, that kinda looks like Karma, but maybe it's just a coincidence they look the same or something like that. May I join you? I look up and stare in shock at the beautiful lady from the toy shop. Her beauty still manages to take my breath away. What is she doing here? You. You were in the toy shop. Ah, yes. I was there picking up some items for a friend. I am humble you still remember me. <laughs> Sparkles! Oh my god. I love it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Miss Karma. <laughs> so, um, the Kickstarter, when I looked up Karma's character, he actually cross-dresses, and I didn't know that. That's why I was just like... This lady looks exactly like Karma, and I'm like, no, that couldn't be, like, the same person. And it is! He cross-dresses, which is totally awesome. So, 
Yes, the first when this game comes out, the first route that I'm going to be doing is Karma's, and then I'll I'll let you guys decide like uh, who I should pick next. But for the first one, I'm gonna pick Karma. Your name is Karma. A subtle name for someone as beautiful as me. No. <laughs> oh God, Karma, your narcissism is going to scare the princess away. Oh, you're the magician boy. Boy. How appropriate, boy. Call me that one more time and I'll ruin your pretty face of yours. You want to hit a lady? How savage. Anyways, I'm Waltz Cresswell. I have an I have the Neverland curse. What about you, princess? What is your fairy tale curse? Does everyone share what their curse is? Waltz shrugs as Karma smiles. We talk about it freely in the Martian. The whole point of this helping each other break out of Break our curses after all. Hard to do if we keep hard to do that if we keep our fairy tales quiet. He pauses. Oh, okay. So it also I mentioned um from the Kickstarter they mentioned that each uh root or the boy that you can um choose has their own curse. So Walt has the Neverland curse, which is interesting. Does that mean it's like Peter Pan because Peter Pan never grew up, essentially? Is that why everybody keeps calling him boy? I don't know. And I wonder what kind of curse Karma has. He pauses and narrows his eyes slightly. Well, some people keep their fairy tales a secret. He eyes Karma briefly, cocking an eyebrow. The smell never leaves Karma's face. Has anyone managed to break their curse? I've been told that a few have. A few? That's not very reassuring. Well, at least the curse can be broken. I cannot particularly say that reassures me either. Well, I'll ask you, darling. Is it your curse? You can talk about it. You can talk to us about it. Tell us what it is. Cinderella. Oh, goodness. Cinderella. That explains your na the nature of your curse. Only to be reversed hasn't- Only it's been reversed, hasn't it? Riches to rags. That's one way of putting it. Karma, you're not helping. You're better off ignoring him, princess. He mostly speaks nonsense. He? Oh, awkward! <laughs> Princess? Her friend's voice makes me takes me by surprise. I hadn't even noticed her entering the room again. May I speak with you? My god, the artwork is so beautiful! Do you see the, the CGs in the background? Like, holy shit, man! I'd like you to meet someone, though I'm sure you already know him quite well. Rod. Okay! I'm still not comfortable Rod being an, a romance option or a root option. I don't really know how in-depth the romance are in this game. But since Rod is the stepbrother, it's a little bit uncomfortably. I know they're not related by blood, but you know what I mean? It's just like the stepbrother and it's kind of weird to me. It's feeling a little bit Game of thrones -y, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> Rod? So you really are cursed. I was the one that gave Sebi to Rod, so that he could still have some way to voice his opinions. Sebi? Show for Sebastian. Cute, isn't it? It's nice to meet you, princess! Sebi's voice changes when he greets me. The tone he uses is lower whenever it speaks for Rod. Perhaps it's, it's what Rod's voice usually sounds like? Wait, if he remembers, remembers me, does that mean... The mermaid's curse. What? That's my curse. Oh, Rod's curse too! Oh, that's true. But, wait. Oh! Oh, okay, now I get it. He has a mermaid's curse, so in The Little Mermaid, when a Ariel gives her, her she signs her voice away to uh, Ursula um, to become human. Ugh, God, my nose. So Rod doesn't have any voice, but the bunny on his shoulder talks for him? Because I remember Lucette mentioning that in the first part when they were having uh, breakfast or dinner, whatever the hell it was. Uh, she mentions that that's why he's quiet and he doesn't really say anything, but... Rod has been mute all this time because of he is cursed? Does everyone else know? I've, oh, I've, should I give a demon voice to the bunny or a really cute voice? I kind of want to give a demon voice to this thing. Obviously, they are my family. Even the king? He knows us well. So am I the only one you've never told? I didn't think you'd particularly care either way. He's not wrong. Yet, I cannot believe. I did not know. I was left out once again. What are you doing here? Rod's been coming to the Martian even before he was the prince for previously 
for precisely the same reasons as everyone else. To get more information on breaking his curse. I only came here today to confirm that you were truly cursed. I wanted to see that with my own eyes. It was a big surprise when I woke up one day and you weren't in the palace. And even bigger surprise when I found that there was no one remembered you. The palace? It's been days since I was cursed. I wonder... How are things in the palace? Livelier. Happier. H happier I've never seen my family happier than I they are now. I'd say it's a good thing you aren't the princess anymore! I always thought that Raj didn't really care about me regardless, but... But this is the truth? So how did- so this is how you truly feel? I don't know. So I have to be cursed for you to open up about how you truly feel. The only reason I didn't say anything or the only reason I didn't say anything earlier was because, uh, oh god, his sister's name. <laughs> I'm happier too. Okay, I'm gonna stop with the demon voice. It's not working out. <laughs> I'm I'm happier too now that you're gone. I don't have to pretend to like you anymore. Oh shit! Damn! No mercy, Rod. Oh, my god. I'm going to return to the palace now. Damn. Damn. But to be fair, the way that Lucia is acting, she kind of deserves it because she's kind of a bitch right now. I'm gone and they're all happier. Your very existence has been erased in the palace. They've never known you. That doesn't mean that they're happy without you. Even the king. What did I expect? Why did you bring me here? The people in Martian, they... I... I shouldn't have left you alone in there. I'm sorry. You knew how they felt about me. What have I done? What have I ever done to them? Now isn't the right time to explain. When will it be the right time? So many things have already happened to you. I need you to be patient, Lizette. Has the prince already left? Yes. Yes, he has. Princess, we'll be talking about this later. For now, you must focus on breaking your curse. Did I miss something? <laughs> no. Right. Maybe the fairy is right. I don't think I am ready to find out how how I made so many people here hate me. Well, Parfait, I think it's time you get down to business. What should we do with her? What are you talking about now? You, of course. You've got nowhere to go, right? She's right. I think back to the days I spent on the streets and shiver. I will do anything, so long as I don't have to go back there. The princess can stay at the Martian with me and, and the rest of my boarders. I must have forgotten what, uh, what hope felt like. But you will have to work in exchange for your room. I celebrate too soon. What? Magic has its limitations, just like anything else. Money doesn't appear out of thin air, not even for a fairy. The Martian doesn't attract many customers, since so only the curse and a few others can enter. I sell my portions here and there, but I have several hunger I have several hungry mouths to feed and funds are tight. Her expression is very human. She looks grim and tired. I thought fairies lived in luxury. Her friend, are you broke? It's a little bit rude to ask, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Ouch. Even the ice princess can tell. And yet you still take people in? That's always been how Parfait operates. She's good natured to fault. I'm told to suffocate. I'm told suffocating beneath de my death will be, will be what kills me. Why don't you just leave? I assume you have made. I assume you make enough to take care of yourself. Leave someone who's in need of help? I could never. And that, princess, is how goodness works. I love Dolores. She's like, bitch, listen. <laughs> how goodness works? It's not if you. It's not as if I accept freeloaders. All my boarders help me run the Martian and do errands. The princess has never worked a day in her life. I doubt she'll be useful. If karma can be useful, anyone can. Hmm. I'd have to see karma be anything but useless. <laughs> My god. You're more than welcome to stay if you're willing to help out. It's the least you can do in exchange for a roof over your head and three meals a day. Oh, and shoes. Do I even have a choice? I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Cinderella Finana. And sorry that I'm not on webcam. This is me in the editing room. And I don't 
have time to plug it in and look like a mess and everything. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me what you think of the demo so far. And, um, yeah, I'm picking Karma first, just letting everybody know that for the first truth. That's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!